The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing us under of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly equipped unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hosea 14, verse 4, I will heal their backsliding, I will love them freely, for my anger has turned away from him. Ezekiel 34, 16, 30 to 31. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick, but I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. Thus they shall know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. You are my flock, the flock of my pasture. You are men, and I am your God. Proverbs 28, 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Psalm 119, 67 to 68. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep my word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards a rebuke will be honored. Hebrews 12, 11-14 Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people, and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Psalm 94, 12-14 Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. Jonah 2, verse 7, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. In preparation for our study of the Word of God today, the next few moments will be devoted to silent prayer, the objective of which is to make sure that we are filled with the Holy Spirit as we approach the Word of God. So silent prayer gives you the privacy of the priesthood and makes the option of rebound possible, if necessary. But for you, unbeliever, the issue you're facing is not rebound, but faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us pray. We thank you, Father, for your wonderful sense of humor, for your faithfulness, 
you relax mental attitude toward us because of grace. For the fact that you love us on the basis of your character without compromising your character. For the fact that you have never compromised your character even once in loving to the maximum the worst believer and the best who ever lived. We thank you that grace found a way to accomplish all of this. As we continue to study this grace gift from Jesus Christ, may God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Welcome, everyone. I hope you are in the pink of health. And uh, as we continue our discussion, our study, on the topic, Colossians chapter 3. Okay, we will continue where we stopped yesterday. Now, as we have already said, that we cannot invite Christ into our heart because our heart is deceitful. The big question reigns, did you answer God's call, His invitation? Well, of course, it is a matter of choice. We know that once we answer God's call by believing in Christ as Savior, we automatically become members of the royal family of God, one body with equal privilege and equal opportunity. In Colossians 1.18, the Word of God says, He, the Lord Jesus Christ, is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Now it's true that every believer is part of the body of Christ. Each member has his own function in the body, and each member is important. Not one is insignificant in every function. Every role in every member is very important and significant. John 7, 37 says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Verse 38, He who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now we believers were called from darkness to light. Remember John 8, 12, 12 I mean, Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, follows there is following. Following what? What do we mean by following? It means faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 15, Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, in Colossians 3.15, there are a lot of biblical principles that we can learn as we continue to take in Bible doctrine every day. When we study God's Word, we do it verse by verse from its original language. In fact, we do it through the ICE method. ICE, 
isagogical, C, categorical, and E, exegetical. Now this is the only way to be able to grow up spiritually. We study Bible doctrine and the various rationales behind it and let it circulate in the stream of our consciousness. Now we know that God's Word is the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. We believers are mandated to give thanks, give thanks in everything. Romans 6, 17 to 18, verse 17 says, But thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you be, and then continue, in verse 18, and having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Ephesians 2.8, you have been saved by grace through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Colossians 1.12, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Now, remember the inheritance? This inheritance here is technically our rewards in eternity. God has provided this to us in antecedent grace. God is the one who gives us the gift of salvation. God supplies all our needs according to His riches. Note the word qualified us in Colossians 1.12. This qualification, by the way, only happens at the point of salvation. The next qualification for believers to be able to share in the inheritance of the saints in light is when they reach capacity to receive the rewards in eternity. Here is a question. What do we mean by the marvelous light? The answer is, this is part of the believer's qualification. All believers are saints. In Psalms 119.105, your word is the lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In the New Testament, uh, specifically in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, it says, For God who said, Light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. In the Old Testament, Genesis 1, 3 says, Then God said, Let there be light. Now, back to Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Peace is irene. Rule is to let it dominate or let it lead. Now, believers have acquired this peace at the point of salvation. From there, Believers continue to take in Bible doctrine to be able to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3.18. Now, last time we were talking about the light. Remember when the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world? As believers, our Lord said to us, you are supposed to be the reflector of this light. This light is eternal life. In Genesis 1.1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Verse 3, 
Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, let there be light there. This talks about plurality. Now, in verse 2 is restoration done and performed by God the Holy Spirit. In verse 3, the God who said, let there be light, is the same God who restores our soul at the moment of salvation. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who said light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shone in our hearts. Matthew 5, 16, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now everything is visible at the light. Ephesians 5.13 But all things become visible. Now, in John 3, verses 20 to 21. Now, let's take up verse 20 first. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Verse 21 but he who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifested as having been wrought in God. Okay, let's talk more about light. In Psalms 119 verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Uh, also in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. In verse 106, this explains how to acquire this light. It says, I have sworn and I will confirm it that I will keep your righteous ordinances. Well, you may continue. In verse 107, it says, I am exceedingly afflicted. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. And then verse 108, O accept. Verse 109, my life is continually in my hand. Now my life there is physical life. In verse 110, the wicked have laid a snare for me. The wicked there is people testing. Now, in verse 111, I have inherited your testimonies forever, for they are the joy of my heart. Verse 112, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever, even to the end. Now, by the way, here is a principle. In the midst of trials in life, you have no problem. Why? Because God has all the solutions to your problems. The solutions are the light. Remember that. Remember the principle also, human solution is no solution. Only divine solution is the real, genuine solution. Take that to heart also. Colossians 3.15 again. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Peace, irony. Remember God's ten problem-solving devices? Or you have forgotten them? Don't forget those ten problem-solving devices. That's God's provision for all believers. Now, in Ephesians 1.3, that talks about portfolio of invisible assets. And it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Every spiritual blessing there uh, means the portfolio of invisible assets. Now, the above spiritual blessing is part of God's grace provision for every believer. You see, the Christian way of life, as we have always defined, 
is a supernatural way of life. And as such, it demands a supernatural way of execution. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith, not by sight. Now, by the way, most of the Pauline epistles, like Corinthians, Ephesians, Thessalonians, etc., they emphasize living by faith, not by sight. Why? Do you know why? Because we know what happened to Paul on his Damascus way. He was struck by God by making him blind. It was sight. That's the focus here. So we live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. What does Hebrews 11, 1 say? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Colossians 1, 12. Give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Underline that word light. Psalm 119, verse 105 again. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. There is light again. Verse 106. I have sworn and I will confirm it that I will keep your righteous ordinances. Verse 107. I am exceedingly afflicted. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Verse 108, Oh, accept the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord. Verse 109, My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. Verse 110, The wicked have I laid a snare for me, yet I have not gone astray from your precepts. Verse 111, I have inherited your testimonies forever, for they are the joy of my heart. Verse 112, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever, even to the end. Now, let's go back to Colossians 3.15 again. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Have you noticed? We keep on repeating and repeating and repeating. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Verse 16, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Now, the word of Christ there in verse 16, this is what motivates every believer in his or her life. Why? Because Christ is now real in his or her life. And the wisdom there, that's talked about in verse 16, means all applications of God's truths. That's wisdom as a whole. Now let us always remember that all believers will face Christ during the evaluation time, which is doctrinally and technically called the judgment seat of Christ or the bima seat. All of our works, both human and divine, are going to be evaluated. And you know what we mean by human good. Human good is anything and everything a believer does outside of the operational divine atmosphere. Whereas divine good is defined as anything and everything a believer does inside the operational divine dynosphere. Now, by the way, human good works are likened to wood, hay, and stubble. They're going to be burned. They are combustible. 1 Corinthians 3.12 
whereas divine good works are likened to gold, silver, precious stones. <coughs> Excuse me. They will stand from being burned. This kind of good, I mean the divine good works, is the only good works that are rewardable. Now, in Corinthians or 1 Corinthians 3.10, according to the grace of God, which was given to me like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. Verse 11, For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 12, Now if any man builds on the uh, foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Then continue in verse 13. Now remember again, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, verse 105. Now, by the way, living in the light means living our life as unto the Lord. God's word is now real to our life as Christians. I hope it is now real to your life. In Proverbs 2.10, For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Verse 11, Discretion will guard you, understanding will watch over you. Verse 12, To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. Verse 13, from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Believers should be grateful for what God has given them, including what? The most important of all, salvation. But we should understand in Hebrews 6, 9, it says, But beloved, we are convinced of better things concerning you and things that accompany salvation, though we are speaking in this way. Back to Colossians 3.15 again. Let the peace of Christ rule. Now, you remember, we believers are elected and predestined and a part of the body of Christ. Each believer in the church age has a spiritual gift given by whom? By God the Holy Spirit. That spiritual gift can only be discovered and noticed as the believer continues to grow up spiritually. 1 Corinthians 1 Verse 4, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God. Verse 5, that in everything you were enriched in Him. Verse, I mean Ephesians 5, 1, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Only metabolized Bible doctrine is the source of making God real in our life. Only post-salvation epistemological rehabilitation is what believers need to repeat and repeat and repeat to take in for the purpose of fulfilling the principle the rate of learning should exceed the rate of forgetting. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Now, by the way, in verse 16, that richly dwell, in the original Greek word, it's inoikuo. Inoikuo means to dwell. That's in third person, 
Prosius is richly. Prosius. Now, okay, in verse, oh, I mean, 2 Timothy 1.14, guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Now, back to Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. That's according to uh, NAS, NASB. Now, the word there is, of course, the Bible doctrine. And richly is precious, meaning valuable. With all wisdom means its connection is a prepositional phrase. Now in 1 John 2, verse 16, God's word says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Verse 17, the world is passing away. Now, the original word is polytheoma. Polytheoma means we are in this world, but we are now citizens of heaven. Now, back to Colossians 3.15 again. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now, of course, the Word of God is very valuable to us. Ephesians 1.3 Spiritual assets in the heavenly places that we have been blessed as believers. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1, No, not 1.1, 1, 1, but Hebrews 11.1 1, As we have heard this, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, by the way, Back to Colossians 3, 16. Verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns. Now, the teaching there in that particular verse is the dasko in Greek language. And uh, admonishing is notiteo. No theo, to admonish someone who did something wrong. That's the meaning there. Now Colossians 3.16 again, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, <clears throat> you remember the original word for walk, to walk means Piripatao in the Greek word. Way of living. The word of God is every believer's treasure, valuable treasure, because it is the only thing that a believer can bring to heaven, nothing else. Remember that. We cannot bring anything to heaven except the word of God. That is the believer's treasure valuable treasure. Now, teaching is didasco, teaching method, situation, depicting a formal setting. Whereas, a teacher in the Greek word is didaskalos. The subject matter being taught is didaskalia. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we believers are taught and admonished by God's Word to move forward in our spiritual growth until we reach the higher ground, which is the spiritual adulthood stage. And as we continue in our spiritual momentum, let us be reminded that every time we study God's Word, it's not important just to learn God's Word, memorize verses, and chapters of it, but that the Word of God dwell in us 
richly. Colossians 3.16 Converted spiritually through the power of God the Holy Spirit. One of the two power options. Remember the two spiritual skills? Bible doctrine and filling of the Holy Spirit. Now may I ask you this question. When can a thing, anything, when can a thing become something of value to you? When? Well, the answer is when that thing is so necessary, so indispensable to you, so much so, that without it, you would think you cannot live without it. Understand? That is supposed to be the answer. Therefore, God's Word should and must be indispensable to the life of every believer. Should and must be valuable and so necessary, so much so, that without it, without Bible doctrine, we believers cannot live our spiritual life without it. We cannot. So think and ponder on that. Colossians 3.17 May the word of Christ dwell richly in your hearts in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, let us remember that the Christian way of life is a supernatural way of life, and as such, it demands a supernatural way of execution. Now, there are three commands for every believer who desires to live the Christian way of life. One, imitate Christ. Two, have the mind of Christ. Three, in everything we do, in word or deed, do it as unto the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, as Christians, we are now, we are now supposed to make 1 John 1, 9 and Psalms 32, 5 second nature to us. Also, let us remember that the rebound technique is not a license to sin. It is a license to what? To serve God. So, if you don't use rebound, then you cannot serve God. Second Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Romans 14.12 so then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Yes, we are going to give account of ourselves to God. John seventeen twenty five, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. Now, of course, that's John 17, 25 and Philippians 2, 9. Now, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Verse 10, That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Verse 11, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Now, this is very basic. God's plan is grace, and grace is the plan of God. Remember what Colossians 3.17 says? 
whatever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In Isaiah, God's word says that those who wait on the Lord, etc., etc., shall renew their strength, meaning recharge. Wait. Now, what does this mean, wait? This means that we are waiting on the Lord for something fantastic, the grace of God. Psalms 25, 3. Ye, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed, which transgress without cause. So, don't you ever forget Colossians 3.17, which says, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Now, all there is in plural, okay? Pass, whatever is pass, meaning all. Singular. The word all there is singular, our spiritual life. Second Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Romans 14.12 so then, each one of us will give an account of himself to God. We will stop here and we will continue this tomorrow. So, don't forget to follow us in our discussion on this topic. Let us pray. My friend, should you die right at this very moment, do you know for sure you will live forever in eternity in heaven or in hell. Now, the Bible, the Word of God talks and tells us that you can know, you can know for sure that you will live either in eternity in heaven or in hell. I am asking you, friend, this question since this is the most important question you will ever encounter in your entire life. So let me ask you this. Are you saved? It's not a question of whether you are a member of a church or not, but are you saved? It is not a question of whether you are living a decent, respectable, and honorable life, but are you saved? The Bible says we all need to be saved. My friend, for you to get saved, first of all, you have got to acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner. The Word of God says in Romans 3, 10 to 12, There is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. Romans 3, 23 also says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Friend, it's because of your sins that you have come short of the glory of God. That's the reason why you will never be able to meet the necessary requirements for you to be saved. Secondly, you must realize that someone loves you who in fact died for you. And he is the Lord Jesus Christ who died at the cross for the purpose of paying for your sins and who gave you the opportunity to get saved and go to heaven after you die. Now Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, by faith, accept the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what God the Father only expects from you. Because Jesus died in order for him to give eternal life to all those who believe in him. However, like any gift, that gift, if not accepted, would be of no use. Yes, my friend, 
I just call you friend this time since you are yet an unbeliever. My friend, the Bible says you can be saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, and there is no other means. And you cannot add anything to it, none. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, We have been saved by grace through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Listen, the only faith that can save you is your total trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Acts 16, 31. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that so great salvation. We thank you for sending to us your only begotten Son and for becoming our substitute in paying for our sins. And now, as your children, we pray that you will guide us in our Christian life, that we may be able to attain our spiritual goal, which is spiritual maturity in the capacity states, thus glorifying you to the maximum, you who deserves all the honor, all the respect, all the love, all the adoration, all the worship, all the praises. All these we ask in Christ's name. Amen.